Chapter 9 Outside the window, the noise and the clamor were continuous. High-speed pneumatic hammers were drilling holes many feet into the old rock, a rock which used to be the site of many fine old houses. In years gone by, the wives of sea captains lived here and kept their nightly vigil of the sea, waiting for their men to return home, home to the haven of the harbor, with the ever-burning light beckoning from the house windows. One fine old house, towering above the others, had stood proud for years, and in its declining days the ghost of the lady who had watched, and watched in vain for the return of her beloved husband, had become well known. Nightly she stood at the port-side window, with her hands holding aside the drapes so that she could see the more clearly. Night after night, in ghostly outline, she stood there, peering, peering, seeking the man who never came back to her, the man whose body lay beneath the surface of the ocean a thousand miles from home. Now the house was down, demolished. The whole street of houses was down, and the voracious drills and hammers were biting at the living rock tearing it up in great chunks to make way for the progress of civilization. Here would be a great road, an artery of the community, a road spanning the city, spanning too the river, linking one side to the other by a new bridge. The clamor was continuous. Immense bulldozers shoved vast piles of rock and earth. Steam shovels gouged into the soil, and trucks rattled and roared at all hours of the day and night. There was the shouting of men and the barking of dogs, and peace had fled long ago. The old man bent over the letters from readers and set aside the last one. Mrs. Old Man looked up, perhaps with a sigh of relief to see that work was coming to an end. She then rose to feed the little girl cats who had come bustling in to say that it was their tea time, and could they have their food in a hurry, please, because they had thought a lot and were very hungry. So Mrs. Old Man went off with a cat on each side. The old man turned to Buttercup. Buttercup, who in Spanish was misnamed Amapola. Buttercup, said the old man, it doesn't matter that there has been a mail strike. We've done some good work in answering all these queries, haven't we? Buttercup looked pleased to think that work was coming to an end for another day. You only started this fourteen days ago she said, and now the book is finished in record time. Yes, replied the old man, but you've typed seven thousand words a day, haven't you? And now we've come to an end. Buttercup smiled with pleasure at the thought. Well, in that case, I will just type, replied Buttercup. The End